Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. I'm Beatrice Murad, and today I'm joined by Alex Bonilla. Hola. And John McKenna. Hi, everybody. This podcast is all about the Netflix animated series Carmen Sandiego. We will be discussing the series as a whole, so yes, there will be spoilers. You have been warned. Uh, don't listen if you haven't seen it and you don't want to be spoiled. If you do want to be spoiled and you don't mind, feel free to continue listening. Um, you can find out more about this podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes, where we appreciate your star ratings, or search for Overly Animated on your favorite podcatcher. All right, so, guys, tell me, just general thoughts. Did you like this show? You know, uh, what do you think about it? Also, if you can include in there your own personal history with Carmen Sandiego as a franchise. Um, Alex, let's start with you. Okay, so all I knew about Carmen Sandiego before this, I was in elementary school and the computers in the library had a Carmen Sandiego game, but I wasn't, a, our class wasn't allowed to play them since it was like only fourth and fifth graders. And by the time I got into fifth grade, they didn't have that game anymore. So pretty much that's my only connection to Carmen Sandiego. Ouch. I'm aware that pop pop culture has rebooted her many times but anyway so this is my first standard experience with her and uh yeah the show is um the it has carmen san diego in the name of the show that's uh, she is she is a self-titled star and i think that she is the best part of this show all the elements surrounding her are not as exciting, but when it's solely focused on her, it's pretty. It, I think it's pretty fun. I think that uh, they do a good job at characterizing her. I love. I, I I love her a lot. I just wish the stuff around her was a lot more interesting. But so I, I can't say that I like the show overall, but I like her. I like Carmen. Gotcha, gotcha. Would you stick around for her if the show continues? Maybe. I I, I guess you're worth sticking around for even further than what you've invested. Yeah, like I think once I'm a year separated, it's like, oh, okay, Carmen's back. Like I'll eventually get to that because I enjoy her her thing. So I I think that there's enough here to stay around, but it's it's also not one that. uh, So uh, we'll we'll talk about it through the show, and maybe I'll feel differently after we hash it out. But I I don't feel strongly enough about it to like say, hey, you have to watch this right now. Like I, I think that there needs to be more for me for it to be worth recommending to people gotcha gotcha what about you john did you like this show um i you know it's it's tough because when as i was watching it i realized that this was essentially the same carmen san diego that i remember growing up as a kid it's the same level of camp it's the same level of just out there bonkers crazy uh thievery uh, I was a little skeptical about the shift to make her a quote unquote good, good person, because that just sort of flies in the face of everything that's come before. It. And I watched the hell out of the original of all the Carmen San Diego stuff when I was younger. Uh, Rare in the World, the game show was filmed actually in Boston, which was also really cool. I remember watching Where in Time as Carmen San Diego when I was home. I played the games. Uh I study. I remember reading about the history about it, including the rare to find where in North Dakota is Carmen San Diego, which exists somehow. Um, so I was really excited when it came back because I remember the impact it had on me growing up in terms of learning about history, learning about geography. And this show actually did teach me some new things as well. There were some things I didn't know. It was great to learn that. The show itself is okay. I think it's definitely geared more towards seven, eight, nine, ten year olds, which is which. I mean, it sort of irked me a little bit. Some of the plots felt were a little ham-fisted. I thought the, the show really didn't jive as well as it, as it could have, given what they what they want to do with Carmen, what they want to do with their backstory. But if you have like a seven, eight, nine-year-old kid at home and you remember this, they'll probably get the same kick out of it that I did growing up. So if that's the aim, and I think that was the aim, I think they succeeded in this. And I would – and I, I'll stick around for season two because I am interested in how they play off Carmen's backstory and how – and seeing whether or not this can gel going forward. I am skeptical, but not so skeptical that I'm going to – I just wouldn't give it a recommendation. Speaking of of Boston, what do you think of, of the siblings and their accent? 
Mm. They're from they're from Rhode Island. Oh, they're is, from Rhode Island? No, really? No, I thought they were no, from no, Boston. No, 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 that's the joke. I'm joking because that is the worst accent I have ever heard. Okay. And I've heard some bad ones. No, I, I actually I, I didn't mind it too much. Um I thought it was actually a hat tip to uh sort of the, the Boston origins of the show. So I was like, that's fine. I like the park I like the park car and Aardvark yard joke. That was cool. Um that was all right. I thought they were fine. Gotcha. Uh, I was quite annoyed by the Boston accents, and they are whenever they're on screen, it makes me less happy. So uh, yeah, I, I am anti uh, being reminded that Boston accents are that uh, obnoxious when played up that high up. So uh, I I don't like that part of the show. How dare you? <laughs> all right. Um. Well, I am more. I feel like I'm even more removed from the series than both of you. Because I had no idea what it was. Like, I, this is, despite it, be, or it being, like, uh, Latina, I, this is a very American franchise in terms, of, like, I had no idea what this was, no connection to it. Um, and I agree with Alex in that I enjoyed it. I thought the, I think, I think it's, the animation's beautiful. I think I, I was very surprised by the production value. Um, and I, Love Carmen and uh, Julia and Paper. <laughs> I love them, but for other reasons. Um, so yeah, so I was I, I enjoyed that aspect. I have other issues with it, but we'll get into them um, before we move on to that question that John to that point that John made about the decision to make Carmen in San Diego a good guy. Um, I need to ask because apparently this is like a big deal to people, so I feel like I have to ask. Did you guys like the theme song? People were like shading it. Other people were like loving it. I just, I, apparently it's a big deal, the, her theme song. So John, like, th- did you enjoy it? Is a theme song a big deal or is this just the internet being weird? Um, it is a big deal because the original theme song was done by uh, Rockapella and it's still one of the catchiest theme songs and really one of the best theme songs of the nineties. I still, I listen to it all the time. It's great. It was fun. It, great it was fun you remember from the game show and all that uh and i think there was i think part of the reason why the internet was sort of sliding it off was because uh rockapella i think came out and said i have to check this it could be wrong but i guess like they were approached after the fact to see if they would do the theme song and i guess they didn't but Uh, no that they were they weren't approached is the thing and then they they posted their version their remix version of rockapella which stunk because it's like all very electronic remixy stuff so like yeah so i I, i'm happy they didn't go with it personally but okay thank you um yeah i mean the theme song this was forgettable by comparison like I get, I get they were sort of trying to do it felt like they were trying to get a little bit of archer in there a little bit of like james bond in there they took it's it's totally very different. Um, but honestly, I heard it once and I was like, this is forgettable. It's like I'm not going to like I skipped the intro for each successive episode. If that's if that says anything about it. Gotcha. Gotcha. OK, well, I found it fine. I was like, it's, it's fine. So, again, no connection. There- so for what I was given as a fresh, completely green audience member, it, it worked. I I will just say with the intro, the one thing that I do like is at the end, the Carmen does her little hat tip and it's like red background, black yeah, shadow. I, the, like that's that, really that, cool. That, that shot is pretty cool. The, the rest of the intro is whatever, but like that ending shot is like, yes, this is this is a cool show. <laughs> yeah, I like I liked that little visual touch too, and they had that in the beginning of the ep- of the first two episodes as well. I was like, that works well. All right, all right. Well, let's go into the biggest, I guess, controversy around the show, which is that they made Carmen Sandiego a, a good person. Where supposedly she's more morally gray than we are. Or is she or is she not? Is she just was well, she's just a straight up villain in the series, John? Like where what what is she in the original? She's like the head of she's like the head villain of Vile. She's oh, the one really who, she's the head she's the head of Vile. She's the head villain. Like the whole within the game shows like i remember the game shows more there was like i think it was like one tv series and i but but so i'm based a lot of this on the game shows and the computer games that we would play like the whole goal was eventually you have to catch carmen you catch the sub villain first the one who stole the artifact and put it in the random location or whatever which was basically every episode of this series too so they kept that theme but the end was catch carmen that was the big thing she's the one you always had to go get uh so making her a good vil- making her a good person this I'm gonna say she's 
it's like not maybe not morally gray, but maybe morally sort of grayish white because she is stealing from thieves and returning the artifacts to where they are. I mean, versus maybe like calling Interpol or calling the police, maybe, yeah, it's a little bit more gray than that. But it's just so it's such a departure from every established Carmen canon that I remember and that what people remember that it's it's jarring. I I got really nervous about this series when I learned that was the theme going forward. I'm a bit more fine with it now because to the extent it worked because it, it worked OK, it wasn't the train wreck that I was worried it was going to be. But I, I just I think for me, it's too early to say whether or not this is a sustainable plot thread going forward and that it will work as a whole later on. Right. Right. Gotcha. Alex, what do you have an opinion? On this. Uh, I mean, I, I was totally fine with it. I, uh, uh, obviously, I didn't grow up with this, but my, my impression when I hear that is that, that, that this feels kind of overblown. Do people really care that much that a character is like switching sides in a, in a reboot? Like that's that's a way to make things interesting. And I think in the in this show, like it, it comes off well. Like she's she's getting to do her vigilante thing. It's like, a, well, well, what if Batman was a woman? You know, like a cool 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 things can come from that. So uh, I. I, I think that this show does it perfectly fine. And it, 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 maybe it's predictable that a kid's show would make your main character a quote unquote good person because we can't, uh, it, doing anti heroes aimed at younger audiences is still a touchy subject with people. So maybe in that sense, you, we can talk like on a larger scale about why people are maybe afraid to show those kind of characters to young, to younger kids. But even so, I, I think that Carmen and this show does a, does a good job of like having the, the right balance of shadiness, but still at the end doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just based on what I hear of the original series, she doesn't in the, even though she's the title character of it, she doesn't really seem like the character the you don't like mm. she i don't feel like she's she like there's much there she's just a per, she's just a villain who steals and so i feel like that it was a necessary decision in terms of just we're going to develop we have to develop her we have to give her some sort of story and it's like if she just stole to stole it's like oh that's not interesting why what if we give her a purpose to steal so i feel like that makes more sense like even now even now with like the villains we don't quite understand why they steal i mean like they they give us the reason they're like to to be rich and to live in a like i don't know but it's like but yes but why why are you all doing this why can't if you want to be rich why didn't you just i don't know like go the traditional route of just you know investing in oil or something i don't know how to you know what i mean like that's that's why like i don't quite understand why the villains are doing what they do um so and and that's kind of the question overall with this show. Like, I guess uh, trying to go a bit more meta on this. Like, Carmen is the one who gets all her backstory filled out. But the the my my problem with this show is that the rest of the characters feel so uh, like unfleshed out with a f- mm. full season past us. Even Shadow Son, like you get the 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 twist uh, at the end, but really we, we're still kind of at a lot. We'll we'll have to wait until next season or season three to be like, well, what what really went on in his life that like makes him ch- make this decision, right? And like all these other villains are kind of one note. The the, the Carmen sidekicks are kind of one note. Even the Chase Devino is is pretty one note. So it's just the, the, this is kind of the issue I, with with the show in general that they are focusing a lot of attention on Carmen's backstory, but does that? But was it? Are there missed opportunities here to have done, paid at least a little more attention to the other characters in All right. the show? Yes, and and you, you both you both hit on, and I think you both hit on the challenge that this show was going to have going forward. The franchise in general was there's there's no there was no like this was a very very simple premise of franchise. You belong to Acne Crime Net. These guys are evil. These guys are stealing the world's artifacts. Their organization is called Vile. Of course they're evil. Uh they're you're taking something that was very campy, very good versus bad, and you're trying to build a very complex narrative out of that and that was i think that was always going to be like the top the challenge going forward it's not to say that they can't do that or that hasn't been done it in other shows too if you want staying within the netflix purview uh she really can't be in the 1980s and noel stevenson 
built that out and has done a great job. This, I think, is a bit more challenging than that just because of both the mediums that it's familiar with and also how it was framed. And yeah, Alex is right. I think the the villains aren't terribly flushed out, but I do think that it's more like I think the, if you're going to keep the focus, I think, on Carmen and given they only had one season, you probably couldn't flush them out too each flush each one out too much because you'd simply you'd simply run out of time and also things could get cluttered pretty quickly yeah i mean my my thing is do we need them to be flushed out is the question like it'd be nice but i feel like if i want to care about this show then yes i i would say yes because like i said like at the beginning i like carmen because that's who gets the attention but at, I don't know if I can follow a show where I only like one character. That's kind of, that's kind of my, my but issue. But here's the thing. Like, if the show... Because here's the thing. None of the other characters rarely have a bit of solo time on screen. Most of the screen time is dedicated to Carmen. Like, she's in, say, I want to... Like, if I have to give a percentage, she's in, like, 75% of the on screen. Like, most of the time, it's her. It's Or it's someone playing off her or something. So my thing is... If she's going to be constantly the main focus and she's in for more than like 70% of the screen time, that only gives very little to the others. Not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it's like, it, 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 and I'm not complimenting the show for not fleshing them out. I'm just saying like, if, if like, it's not like that is the most egregious mistake they made and given how it doesn't like just because you like you could watch the show and it's like yeah but it's still very enjoyable because most of the show is Carmen so Mm. if there's one character that had to be developed and like if she wasn't the most developed character if it was like I don't know Chase was the most developed character but Chase is only like 20% of it and well, yeah, that, that would that would stink a lot more. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. like the show is it's not like even though like the criticism is very valid and it's a very strong. Like, it, usually, that's what breaks a show. I just want to say that it didn't break the show. It's like it's still mm. like because she is in most of it and she is the most compelling thing about the show. It still works. So I just want to like have that little like asterisk or footnote. Oh there. no, I, that absolutely, and she was the most compelling, and I think a lot of that is, and not only just her, de- not only is her design also, but uh, Gina Rodriguez, I thought, did a fantastic job with right. the role. I mean, I, I I liked how she, I like how she played the role. I liked her, um, I liked the little bit of uh, sort of edge she gave gave to it. You know, very smooth, very suave, very confident, and I think she, and I think it, the show, I think by and large works because of Gina's voice acting. Yeah, it works. It she did play like a big a big part of it. Um, let's go into what I think is the most. I guess not. And this is like, and this I think it would be the most controversial thing. This is what I think it would turn people off from the show. Not even more, which is crazy because usually I am I agree with you, Alex. Like character development is usually what makes me forget about a show. Just look at Sailor Moon Crystal. It's just horrendous <laughs> character development, except for Sailor Moon. Um, so. For me, it's the geographical info dump. And uh. I understand <laughs> why. Because that is what, that's what Carmen San Diego was. Its purpose was to teach you about the world. And it just is, for me, it just was like, it's in this weird place, the show, where it, I did, like, it wanted to be for that demographic of like, I don't know, from like five to 10. Like that was the demographic they were playing for. They wanted the show for to be to those kids. They basically wanted to reboot the franchise for the very people who enjoyed it in the first place, which, and like, or not those people, but to the, dem- dedicated to the demographic that enjoyed it in the, in the first place. So I understand the geographical info dumps. I get it. It's fine. I just did it need to be a dump. It could have been sprinkled. It could have been, I feel like it could have been incorporated in a different way. Maybe it could have, cause it's still also, cause, cause I get a little confused cause there were moments in the show that were pretty dark. Like in the last episode when, when, um, she's being squeezed, like hugged to death, you could hear bones cracking. Like it, it could, it could get pretty dark, but even so it, it still had these moments that were very much educational and, that to me, I just felt like if they had maybe made it just part of like the re- that's how they kind of played it off as like a rapport between her and player. But I was like, but it's you- not even rapport because they don't <laughs> speak like normal people. Exactly, that's <laughs> right, the thing, though. Exactly. That's the problem. It's just it's so intentionally like this is the education segment, and it's just like very like I don't know. I feel like 
given what they've done with Carmen, I'm like, you, you're talented enough writers. You can like do something a bit more creative with this. And they didn't. They just went with the very traditional thing. I'm assuming the, the, the series did, which is just, here's the info dump before you go and try and chase her. This is all the information you need to fight, figure out. I'm assuming. I don't know. Like, John, what did you think of how they treated this element of the franchise? I think you're right about the whole uh, sprinkle, like sprinkle it through all that, you know, late, like ladle it out uh, through the show. And I know, and it is, it is aimed at uh, five to 10 year olds. And I think the, I think the method behind this show, and I think this might even be the method behind most modern reboots is that the whole idea is you take up, you take a franchise that millennials loved growing up and then access their kids through you. So it's like, hey, look, Carmen San Diego, the millennial parents sees that they call they they go over and yell, son, did you want son? Do you want to watch something your father watched when he was a young lad? Sure, daddy. This is called Carmen San Diego, and it's about a crime fighting, a, a double dipping diva who steals priceless artifacts. I'd love to I'd love to watch this with you and see what you like. Oh, boy, dad. Thanks. I think that was the idea. Um, And I apologize for my horrible accents right there. But whatever. Um. I'm scarred for life. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that was the idea. And to be fair, like when I watched the original game shows and stuff, they were info dumps. This is how they did them. They didn't like they were sprinkled through and all. But the dialogue was always clunky. It was always unnatural. Like even here, they said you could swamble the way to Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm like, thanks. As opposed to Buenos Aires, West Virginia. Uh, I think they could have made it more natural dialogue they could have sprinkled out spread it out a little bit more they could have i th- i really do think like even though it is aimed for kids like we kids animation has kids writing has you know it's really improved right now we're in a really great era for it you could have written it a lot more smooth a lot more natural i feel like the educational value would have still sunk in with the kids and it wouldn't and it wouldn't have had this very sort of hard thumping uh dialogue that just that almost interrupted the action and was like thanks now i have a bunch of trivia cool yeah Yeah, i mean i mean it was a very harsh toner shift but yeah alex well i i want to point to the australia episode as like a a example of two sides of the coin because that episode begins with the info dump and it begins with a player saying good day mate crikey like just just diving into the cliches of australia but then later in the show we get the sydney opera house and like stuff happening there we get carmen talking about uluru and the desecration points to them for using uluru instead of ayers rock so like later on they use elements of australia and incorporate them into the story and it feels a little more explainable that they explain to the sidekicks like, hey, this is why this is important and why we need to stop them from doing the thing. It's like in that in that context, it works fine. But they also need the beginning info dump of, hey, Australia, do you know it's an island? Hey, do you know there's like an outback? Cool. But it's like it, it does it doesn't need that. Like the rest of the episode does. I, I think the rest of the episode shows that they are capable of inserting geographical and cultural knowledge into into their story structure, if that's what they're aiming to do, without needing to rely on the opening exposition. Right. Right. Totally. I mean, because I I'm fine with the, with with uh, Carmen being like a geo uh, like a um, a trivia junkie. Like I'm fine with her being like really interested in like cultures around the world and like all this information. Like that could be like a really like quirky kind of nerdy side to her like normally like really suave character so that to me is fine I just feel like there are better like instead of say like maybe instead of her and player because I'm trying to find a way to like make it all work and still have because I'm assuming they still want them there they want to have that clearly educational segment so I'm like Mm. maybe they could make it kind of like that they're both like very competitive and they're both trying to like outsmart one another and they're like oh yeah well did you know this and it's like oh yeah well did you know this and you know what I mean and it's like see who gives first or whatever and then or maybe make it more of like something that could do something for the characters does something for that still provides the educational value and and whatever because I I agree, Alex, that it can be incorporated really well. Another way was when they did the um, the puppet show. Um, that was like another very to say to actually see it happen versus just being told about it. That's something that's really clever. But 
some but I feel like that might go over some kids' heads if you don't actually go like this is Australia. Look, mm. it's an island. Like so it could be like it could like I don't know. I just feel like they could have it could just do certain things or something. Like I don't know. I mean What's his um, name? Um, the 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 male sibling from Boston. What's Zach, his name? Uh, Zach. So I mean, like you could. I mean, I don't want him to be dumbed down, but maybe you could have him be like, "Wow!" Like I don't know, say something silly, and then and then have Carmen being like, "No, it's actually this," and it's like, "There you go," and then there's the education. Um, As it, if he's not already dumbed down, but okay. But I'm just saying, like even more to like I'm just saying, going even <laughs> further, like going that next step where he goes an island. What is that? You know what I mean? Like you don't want to go that far, but also you could if you wanted to. I'm but- just saying they could be like there could be a way to introduce her kind of um curiosity i feel that could work but could also still be a, a bit more less ham-fisted but still be very overtly like for the audience that's technically younger and w- needs to be taught about the world yeah that's 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 i agree and i agree and also there was the and ironically there were a couple parts of the sort of info dump the geographic and history info dumps that I kind of wish were in there, but weren't. So they gave, like, they had all this stuff about, um, like, uh, Ecuador is the big fish trading area. Ecuador is big exporter of bananas. Indonesia is a big rice export. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there, and the one thing that fascinated, the two bits that fascinated me the most was the Eye of Vishnu, which they recovered in uh, Casablanca, and this $10 million postage stamp. I've been like, talk a little bit more, like, integrate a little yeah. bit more about that. It's like, because I was thinking about it, so it's like, I thought it was like, you know, just a silly little, uh, silly little thing. It's like, oh, look, it's a $10 million post stamp. Ha ha. I went online because I was curious. I was like, that's a real stamp and it really is that valuable, which, yeah. which, you know, I was like, that could have been a really cool thing to insert in the show. Like, cause you're saying it's a $10 million stamp. You think it's just little fantasy garbage. Explain that actually is a real stamp that it is that worth that much. Like, I think a kid, I think there'd be some young kids that go bug eyed looking at that. They'd be like, wow, that's so cool that a stamp could be $10 million. Right, right. Totally. I mean, I do think there's certain there's certain um, facts that maybe they could have replaced with other facts. But again, it's like if you're go- it's one thing if like a 10 year old finds that super interesting. But what a five year old? I feel like they still they, it's a big range. And like it's yeah. a it's a very strange demographic in that the beginning of that demographic and the end of that demographic are practically two different people. You know, they're mm. just, I mean, they're just they're two different minds. They're two different brains. It's not even people. It's like they're two different brains. Like the same, it could be the same person, but the sa- you are not the same person at five as you are at 10, like in terms of just abilities and critical thinking versus say who you are at 12 with who you are at 15. You know what I mean? Even then you, it's a little bit more of a jump. So it, it is hard. It's hard what they're doing. Um, but, the, but, but there are shows that handle the jumps pretty well in other areas. Like there are shows that you know, a 10 year old can like for one reason, the 15 year old can like for another reason. And the 30 year old can like for totally, a different totally, reason too. Totally. I'm just saying in terms of, I'm, I'm singing just purely like in the educational stuff. It's like the 10 year old may know that Australia is an Island <laughs> and everyone above them, but the five year old may not. And it's right. kind of, they have to like accommodate for both. That's why I'm just saying maybe there's a way to, to frame it in a way that could still be entertaining for everybody. And, do, do something for the characters. But, like make it more conversational rather yeah, than just yeah, all just, in the beginning. Yeah, and, and make it more in tone with the show. Because that's the one thing. It's just it feels – that part in particular feels out of place with the show, which is not what we want. You just have to want to incorporate it a little bit more. Um, but let's talk about my – the greatest thing I love about it, about the show, which is the – one of the greatest things, which is the animation. I mean, but it's a double-edged uh. sword because I have some criticisms about it. So I am not used to – this type of character, I mean, this type of animation style to be so smooth. It is so well done. The colors are so vivid. The, the, everything is just so pretty. And yet, I mean, the, the cast is diverse. Every, like, usually these type of shows, like, it's so pretty, but it's, like, kind of clunky. Um, and just in terms of the, the fluidity of the animation. And yet, here you have Carmen designed to be very petite, very feminine, very doll-like. Where if you look at the Carmen of the previous franchise, she was, she was, she was a woman. She had like, <laughs> she had the big back. She had, she was a very large, like, like tall. She was gr- like, she isn't that, she wasn't that kind of, 
um, very feminine figure that we're used to seeing. And this, in this version, she is. So I just kind of had some issue with that where I was like, I love how pretty this all is. But you, by doing that, you kind of erase one of what I found just by looking at pictures, the one of the few things that I found so appealing about the original Carmen, which is that she didn't look like every other cookie cutter female character. She didn't look like Barbie, which was great. So do you, did you guys have any issue with that? Or no, or is that just, you know, because... Well, I, I, will, I will say, I think that the the character design in this is very, um, uh, I don't know if predictable is the word, but like, for example, you also have with the villains, you have Coach Brunt being like a, a, a butch woman, very large yeah. and round, like that's kind of a very cliche thing. You have uh, Shadow San being, you know, skinny, always wearing his sword. Uh, you got the... the, the um, the, the scientist lady who like always wears goggles and has spiky yeah. hair. Like that's a common uh, enough design at this point. So I, I think just in general, the show isn't that creative with its character design. Uh, and Carmen is just another victim of that. And also I think that if, uh, as John mentioned earlier, if the original Carmen is meant to be a villain and then like now you're making her a character that's meant to be sympathetic. And so like subconsciously you go into, oh, okay, so this per now that it's a good person, we need to make them look less quote, ev- less quote evil. And by doing that, you just turn them into generic female hero protagonist. So uh, uh, I, I think it's more of just an issue of the, of the entire show and not just Carmen that just not, um, very few of these character designs are that memorable. Gotcha. Um, and, and I think to that point as well, if you are going to make her a good character, it's, I think also, I think part of it also has to do with if they made Carmen younger than in the originals, like, cause in the others, like she is, you know, an adult, maybe like mid thirties head of an evil empire, which you could, which is something you'd expect, you know, an adult heads an evil empire here. W- the fact that make her good, they're also making him younger. I think the idea is so that, uh, the viewers can relate to her a little bit more and have that and have a stronger connection. I think that's why they went in that direction as well. well yeah, was, she's, was it, she is 20. Was, she's 20. It's not like she's she's, she's like 20. A kid. Yeah, she's a 20 year old. I thought she was like, like 17. No, she's an adult. Okay, okay. so how, how much time skipped between the first two episodes and where we are now? I think it was like a couple years. Like, I think she left when she was, I don't remember, but I remember reading that she was like 20, like, current like present and then she, when uh-huh. she was younger so i, I think because uh, that's another demerit to the character design right because like let's say it's like eight years and yet the villains don't change their look at all they look exactly the same as they were in the times in like the flashback episodes mm. so it's hard to even parse that out because not there's no there's no creativity in like using flashbacks yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, but wait a second so if carmen's 20 how old is player supposed to be then because play they met in, when she was still doing her studies um, yeah, player looks exactly the same. Yeah, player looks exactly the same. Like the only one that looks different is Carmen because her hair grew out, mm. and like she's taller now. Like, and she can walk in heels now. Like, she's the only one that's changed, which falls into the whole thing of like Carmen's the only character with development. Well, in terms of time change, she's also the only one who's changed. But I mean, maybe that sh- that showcases. Maybe that's a, an artistic choice. Maybe that showcases that she's the only one who's had a change in philosophy and morals, but the other people haven't. So she is the only one who phys- who's whose changes mentally and emotionally are physically manifested in her presentation, whereas everyone else is stuck thinking the same way. So they start. They still look the same way. I just solved the problem. There you mm-hmm. go. You should write the next season. <laughs> I should. Pay me, guys. Let me write the next season for you. <laughs> um, But, yeah. So let's talk about that twist. Let's talk about, like, the big... I guess this is, like, the biggest plot point of the show. Because everything else was pretty kind of... It's not monster of the week, but it's pretty much, like, each episode could stand it's on ar- its own. It's artifact of the week. Exactly. Artifact mm. of the week. Um, But this was, like, the big... Like, I guess it was, like, in those final two episodes, this was the big twist was that shadow Sun was actually, like, good, even though he was, like, her big, I guess, like, demon. He was the one where she was like, I, I did steal that at one point, which I found was really interesting, her being obsessed with, like, that... Of her stealing that, because I feel like that shows from Carmen that she's, like... She's very competitive. She know she's very cocky and she's very confident. And like she's like, I know I'm good. 
and he's denying me my satisfaction. Um, so I kind of like that, but he ends up being good. He ends up being one of the good guys. Um, did you see this coming? Did you enjoy it? Did you wish this was more parsed, parsed out throughout the season, like more hinted at? Did you want to play up him as more of a villain so that when the twist happens, it makes more sense? Like, what do you guys think? Um, John uh, I, or Alex out. Well, I, I was going to say, like, I, I enjoyed the the twist uh, because I, I think that the show does a good job of, like, making him kind of uh, Carmen's personal arch rival <laughs> from, yeah. from the very be- uh, first episode where he, he fails her and to, like, continue, continuously being like, you're not ready sort of thing. And I think the rest of the show, like, continues that theme of Shadow Sam being like, no, that this is, we made this mistake last time with Carmen. Let's not do it again with these other young uh, villain people. So, like, it felt like it, it was being just, justified in a way. And then this a, a last episode happens, it's like, whoa, what happened here? So, um, I think you could reasonably complain that there wasn't enough build up to the twist in terms of like, it, like it, it felt sudden. But I think that all the build up of him being portrayed as like the the evil, silent type who like wants to get his revenge on Carmen, uh, that makes it feel a lot more. It gives it a lot more oomph when he like does the turn and Carmen realizes, wait, what, you're helping me escape. So, like, uh, I, I I think that overall it, it it works and uh I'm, I'm a little saddened that at the end it's just like hey i found you and then i disappear and i give you the 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 file so you can have a second season <laughs> it's like that that's show very... up. yeah He'll he probably will show... have to save him or something yeah he, he, and... he will show up but i i was a little disappointed that it kind of felt like uh here i am and here i have given you the second season <laughs> now my job here is done off to the wind yeah i think that is i think that's basically it. like season two we're gonna get like the full the more fleshed out backstory it was a hard curve because i think leading up to it you were supposed to think that coach brunt was the uh, adoptive mother of Karin just yeah. because of how much she babies her, nurtures her, takes care of her and all of that. And for Shadow San to be the one there was, you know, I mean, I didn't see it coming really. And although when I heard his reasoning about this, I was I was struggling with what his reasoning was like. You know, he wanted her to stay in the Vile Academy till for as long as he could to keep her from being a thief. Fine, sure. But I'm like, is that really the best thing he could have done if he didn't want her to turn out to be a villain couldn't you have just like gotten her out of there at some point you know put her on a boat give her like you know tw- 20 bucks and say have, have a great life or something like I couldn't mean, you have- but th- that, that that's the thing though like he was the one who found her as a baby like he he's the one who's the parental figure is the thing like that's why I loved about it. It's like it's not the per- like sure he was he he was like a tough parent, but he was the one who actually really did care about her. He was the one who he wasn't just baby like with uh with uh coach Brent. She was like I don't care if you like I don't really love you even though like I'm nurture you, I'm one of you all this stuff like I'm like at the end of the day, Vile comes first for me, and I feel like with her, like Shadow Sun, like he was a thief. He wasn't like he was. A, he isn't from Acme or anything. He was just always. He found this child and he bonded with it, and then he just was like, "I need to take care of you, and I won't let you be evil." And suddenly, it's like it was a crisis of more of morals for him. And then, and then he he and then at the end, he ke- tries to keep her from from it all. He try, he wants to train her. He wants her to be be able to defend herself but then he didn't want her to end he didn't want the point was he didn't want her to end up being a thief anyway but you know uh, and I then mean, and yeah I'm, I'm not arguing i'm not arguing that he wasn't morally uh, i'm not arguing about his morals or arguing about his intentions i'm more i'm more sort of i'm more sort of like toss uh going going over my head just about like sort of how he was showing it because at the same time she's still at this island at this school where she's training to be a thief like once the smartest solution been get she gets old enough get her like find a way to get her off the island anyway but i feel like that was the plan like she was remember she wasn't a th- training to be a thief initially she was just living in the school and then she herself was like i even though she was young she was like i'm ready to join the school like i want to join the school and he was the only one who said no she shouldn't join like she was she lived at the school but she wasn't part of the actual curriculum until she forced herself into it 
Another wrench that's thrown in here is when he's explaining uh, the the end the, the the scene at the end of the second episode where Carmen escapes from the school and he's like has his sword drawn like he's like I was coming to join you to get off I together yeah. but like if if that's the case then why are you still there <laughs> That is true I mean granted like I feel like he he also may not be aware of how like terrifying he is or how terrifying his sword is so it's like it's why a are katana you running, It's like why are you running away from my katana like what's so scary <laughs> No, no, but I, I mean, like, funny. if his idea is, okay, I'll escape with with you, Carmen, like, let's do this together. But once Carmen leaves, why does he stay at Vile then? If, like, you can I, say that it's parental, like, no, oh, no, because that is Carmen parental. is leaving, That's, I want to go... I, I want to go with her, but then once she's left, why do you stick around for something that it seems that you don't totally believe in? This sounds like an organization that I don't think you could voluntarily leave without suffering some hideous consequence. Though I mean, they have the power right, to wipe. They have the power to wipe your. He's brain. better at escaping than Carmen. I mean, he's well, maybe got he's, he's trying to self sabotage from the inside. He's like, okay, maybe I can keep them off her. If I can't leave with her and protect her, like when she's on my by my side, I can do it from a distance and like. Any time that they try and get her, I self sabotage them. I sabotage them from the inside. I guess I don't know. That is a good question, and maybe we'll we should find an answer for it in the next season. Like maybe next season will be more development of any everyone else. Um. All right. So, I mean, I feel like we've talked about this, so I don't want to really get to this point, which is like which is the side characters that are most memorable. But because we have not talked about her at all. I think we need to fix that. Can we talk about how amazing Julia is? <laughs> She's so great. Uh, she is the one side character. Well, not the one. There's all, Paper is really cool, too. Even though she's not really a character. She's just basically a Harley Quinn, but for this world. Um, Julia's wonderful. She's, she's just this earnest person who's just trying to do her job. Chase is being ridiculous. And then she's just... And she meets this person at this, at this train, this beautiful woman. And she's just like, oh, like, oh, I'm on, I'm on an assignment, but hi. And then suddenly at the end, like, I just find there is this relate. This is the, the detective thief interaction I like. Like, well, not just the interaction, but this is the relationship I want to explore. Like, I want Chase to just, I don't care about Chase. I want the, like, I want the competent, um, Julia to be the one to go after Carmen, but also be the one questioning whether or not Carmen's like good or bad, and like actually like interacting with Carmen and having this complicated relationship with a complicated relationship with her. This is what I want to see. But I mean, am I alone in this? Am I like? Are there any characters that you all that you guys are just like as deeply passionate about as I am? Like, well, it, it doesn't have to be logical. Like, clearly, it's not logical, but. I, I'm with you that the the frustrating thing about Julia is that she almost only appears with Chase, and Chase mm. is such a, a dumb character that yeah. it it, it, lo- it lowers Julia's opportunities to shine. So when Julia gets gets solo moments, like they're they're precious, and uh, I, I think that uh, in ge- in general, it just it feels a little annoying that Julia is put is put in this situation of, okay, I have to concede to my male superior who is dumb and be like, oh, yeah, sure, dumb facts. You don't want to listen to those. I like at the very end of the season where she finally snaps at him and, like, it, start, it finally gives moments of, like, standing up for herself. So it seems that we're on the road to breaking out of that dynamic. Which I hope we get, I hope we have less Chase and uh, and Julia together and more Julia doing her, her own thing of, like, vindicating Carmen since it seems that the in the finale, like she's the only one left who's like, wait, Carmen couldn't have done this bad thing. She's the only one left on the police side. So hopefully she gets to do her own side missions of uncovering the truth. I, I think that Julia should have more opportunities, but she doesn't in this first season. But I agree that Julia is one of the few side characters that re- that show any any sense of actually changing from episode one to episode nine right and and julia like and julia is clearly the smart one of the group and unfortunately she's paired with chase who i have to admit uh his shtick got old by episode two like i was already annoyed by him just because i'm like oh god dude you're first off a you're an idiot b you're overconfident and c you're destroying cars why did Ac- acme should fire you on the spot but I will feel I did feel good about Julia, though, because obviously she is the smart one. She's intelligent. She is the observant one. And the chief, at least, is giving her recognition like she is saying, good jobs, good job solving this. 
Uh, your attention to detail is exactly what we need. So I'm I'm glad she's not going totally unrecognized. Like she is being recognized for her competence. And I would like to see her a little bit more in the um, sort of maybe adjust the scale. So she's in the leadership role and like sort of maybe either move Chase to a side thing or maybe make him like the or maybe sort of keep him as a keep him on the bench maybe in season two, which I think they might be doing because I guess they're tilting it now to uh, figuring out why Carmen would hurt chase so acme is now going to get to pursue carmen while carmen pursues vile which is still weird but we are which is still kind of an odd dynamic anyway but i'd like to see more julia carmen interactions like that just like what you said beatrice the detective spy thing i'd like to see julia stand out a little bit more on her own because i think there is because i think she could be a really good uh sort of b plot a sort of really good b plot star in the show yeah yeah she is like the most i guess in terms of anyone that's in, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like she, it's her, Carmen, I guess, shallow son have the most potential of actually having a, a back, like a backstory worth exploring more. Um, but let's talk about, um, um, the other guy. Cause I feel like, hold on. So I've been, I've just realized I've made a mistake. Uh-huh. For like in the for the entirety of this podcast, I've been referring to the the French detective as Chase, but that's not Chase. Chase is the other guy, wait, the Australian wait. guy. No, 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 no. no you're Chase, right. Chase, Chase, no, well, right? Chase, wait, no. Chase, Chase, is, Chase is the French guy. The it's the uh, Australian guy is uh, uh, Graham. 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 Oh, I, 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 I thought actually, I been. I thought I was making a mistake. Okay, well then there was a typo in my outline because I was like the ship Carmen and Chase. I was like, no, Carmen and Graham. That's it. Okay. Uh, so let's okay. let's uh, talk oh, about. Oh, okay. Okay. I was looking. I, made, at, I was looking. I, at ship, yeah, I was that like, was a little weird. No, sorry. It's, I made a mistake. Uh, so let's talk about Carmen and Graham. Let's. We have to talk about Graham. Unfortunately, I don't want to talk about Graham, but we're just I, I, I will. Graham. I will say I kind of like Graham in the Australia episode. Like I, I like the concept of hey, uh, evil agency puts you through amnesia, and now we reset you, and now Carmen has to deal with oh, okay, this isn't the person I met and betrayed me. This is a totally new person. How do I handle this? the The resolution is a little is a little expected. Like okay, well now he's on his own life. I shouldn't interfere. Let him live his life without me. Me- messing it up ag- for him again and walks away. So I, it, it, the resolution feels a little expected, but I, li- I like the idea of it, of dealing with a person you used to know that no longer recognizes you and you have kind of a fresh start sort of thing. Do you try again or do you just let it be? So, yeah, I, I like that episode of Graham. The first two episodes are, are whatever, because like, like, they, they try to do this uh, brother-sister dynamic. It doesn't really work to me personally, but the, the other episode is fine. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, the, yeah the, when they wiped his brain, I was like, holy snot, that was, uh, that was dramatic. And, and he goes back to being an electrician, and I did like the sort of dilemma Carmen had in relation to him like i thought he was an okay character i like i thought he had some degree of some degree of charisma he had some degree of personality which is good uh but and i liked carmen trying to decide you know do i want to have this new relationship with him you know because he has a fresh start and all that and carmen has every right to be uh skeptical because like she probably doesn't know that vile can wipe minds uh and she realizes that if she she knows vile is still on her case and being with Graham could put him in danger. It could put she's already in danger. Like he could be drawn into it, too. And, you know, she recognizes that this is a new life for him. He's happy. He's content. He lost a year of his memory. But other than that, he he seemed to be f- having fun at his job, which is w- the job he originally had. So I th- I don't know whether or not he's going to have. I'm not expecting him to come back, though, in season two. I feel like we kind of got the start and the end of his time unless like they do this weird thing where his memory all of a sudden comes back to him through some weird deus ex machina or or like the player in that episode is like filling time with like oh but what if he's a sleeper cell oh but what if vile did this oh so like just like it's uh, we're felt we like it threw out like five different possibilities to do with chase in the future thanks to the ramblings of a kid in his basement well the question is do we the question is are these kind of the things that we as viewers would necessarily want i'm on the side of not really no, I, I, we don't. Like, for me, that that is my big worry. My big worry is that they are going to bring him back either with Vile using him as as a uh, 
like as a as a bait for Carmen or with Vile using like bringing like being like they can un being able to undo what they did with his mind like that's another thing well then maybe like they can unwipe it so that's my big worry with with this whole thing I'm like if if this is all we get from Graham then fine like I'm okay like she lost her brother it's fine but if they come back and use it in like I, I don't know for me that's that's kind of I don't need that like I, if this is the end of a story it's a fine story if they try and string this along I'm like ah uh, there are other characters Julia who could be much better used for mm. like developing Carmen's character and her and just moving the plot forward um but finally I guess we didn't really talk much about player and we didn't uh, talk much about uh paper um so i mean her name's paper and i just like can we have a better name please um paper star paper star well, that, well, that, well that's her code name the code name but no but i feel like, she, I feel oh, oh, like she, oh, these people only have code names yeah, Who cares about their know, real names? <laughs> so i feel like she 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 likes with the paper star anyway um is there any anything you want to say about them before um, pa- paper is a creepy skipping girl, like whatever. I-, I-, I didn't get much out of her. Player, I am annoyed by. Okay, why is player in this show? Like, what 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 purpose is he serving here? He was in the he, he was in in where on earth is Carmen oh. Sando? He was a character there, but I think his job well, then well, was just boo, to be the fourth boo. wall break. Like, yeah, like but it's a reboot. You don't need to carry over every single character that exists. Player's only purpose in this show is a to help Carmen with her informational info dumps. Carmen is smart enough that she doesn't need the help. B to like do the technology technology. Hey, there's like something over there, and the, Carmen is smart enough that she could probably like have her own system to do it. Like Player just feels so wedged in here. He does not deserve to be the the ol- the only credited character aside from Carmen yeah. in the intro. And he yeah. does not deserve to have this much focus. And plus, they don't like he doesn't do anything interesting with the delivery. Uh, uh, we we see him like throwing up uh, throwing up bat, uh, paper basketballs into a hoop in his room, and that's pretty much the only other shot of him we get outside of him using his computer. Like it feels so stupid. I don't. I'm sure uh, Finn Wolfhard is having a fun time, but he gives nothing to the role, and Player is just a useless character. Get him out of my life. I'm actually going to—I actually disagree with Alex on this one. Um, well, on both of them, actually. Uh, Paper Star, I actually thought was my favorite villain, because I loved her design. It's sort of like—she looked almost like a Toreador in Spain— uh, she had this great sort of menace to her, which is how quiet she talked and just the creepy way she giggled and skipped. I actually really liked that. And also that she can uh, decapitate people with uh, paper uh, shurikens. I was like, OK, that's I like this. I like where I like where this is going. So I, I like I like those kind of like sort of quiet, deadly villain types like they're, they're some of my favorite. And I think she could be a really fun, a really fun villain to uh, to explore more so than I think any of the others, which were. <laughs> To varying degrees of annoying. So um, qu- quiet, deadly villains. So would you say a, a paper star is a combination of tigers and the mime? Sure. Yeah, well, because that. the the mime it fills the quietness, but he's like useless in in a- action. And I think Tigress is actually very menacing as a villain, but maybe her she talks a little bit too much for your liking. I personally enjoy her dialogue a lot, and I think that she's the one of the villains that stands out. But maybe you like the person who barely talks except to do paper puns. No, I mean, I mean, I liked, I mean, I liked Tigress. As, I like, I like Tigress too, but. I don't know. It's just I, I think when it comes to like sort of villains, like if I had to build a perfect villain, I'd much rather err on the side of the the sort of quiet riot versus like, you know, the cocky one. And I felt Tigress was a bit closer to the cocky side, but um, not to say she was bad. I still enjoyed her, just not as much as Paper Star. Um, as far as Player is concerned, I actually kind of liked Player. Like, I think he and Carmen were a good team. I like the idea of having the sort of back-end hacker, back, the back-end white hat hacker, even though they made him wear a white hat, which made me roll my eyes a little uh, bit. Yeah, I was like, come on, really? Well, okay, I, I guess I can explain. White hat is good, black hat bad, blah, 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 blah. Um, but actually, I, I, I thought he was all right. I like the idea of, you know, the, there's a guy on the back, like, you know, Carmen's in the field going to catch these zones. Meanwhile, someone's behind her you know, hacking into systems, getting getting her prepped and ready for her missions. And yeah, Carmen could probably do all this stuff on her own. But then again, she is very busy and, you know, got to outsource it. And player, the 
who is apparently skilled enough to hack into Vile, and it's 26 layers of encryption, he, you know, he provides the info, sort of sets it up. And I do sort of like, and that's a dynamic that's worked in a, bu- in a bunch of places. Well, I think it works well here, and they are a very good team. So I'm, per- I'm perfectly fine with Player being, uh, being one of the stars of the show. Would it would it have been better if he was like an AI or something? No, maybe like like, like, like no, like kind of like like Jarvis or like or or something. I don't know, like not someone like Chief who kind of kind of like just someone who doesn't like if it weren't just someone like a a human in a com- in front of a computer, like if it were just like this entity, like if he would just is like kind of this omnipresent entity that just. Isn't, you know, because I just feel like part of the problem I have with him is that just because of his character, he is so static. He doesn't really move. He's just there. Like, his shots are very boring. Like, if, if, if we had, like, a reason to, I don't know, like, I just, they could have done something with him, like, Oracle, who is, like, in DC, she's, she's in a very similar position where she's someone who is basically giving info and stuff from the side, but she's much more compelling than he is, so I'm just saying, like, maybe they could have, they're trying to figure out a way where they could do something with him to make him interesting, and I feel like part of, I think part of the reason is that he's just literally there, he's just, I don't know, he's, he hasn't really... Well, like, another He's not much of a character, yeah, I don't think. Like the problem, like if you change it to AI, it, then you get the dynamic of Carmen turning on a button, making the computer do things. Because right now it's a human, and like it, 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 they try to build up this this rapport thing between them, where like uh, she's like, "Oh, you had that nightmare again," so like it, it, implying like they talked about their deepest dreams and nightmares off screen. But like in the show, we don't really get any like meaningful conversation between them aside from, "Okay, here's the plan, and here's yeah. what you got to do next." So it's hard for me to buy into them having any sort of friendship, as opposed to like if you, if we went on this alternate reality where it's an AI, like there's no need for that because it's just a computer. Like what what, what do we care if like I, if Iron Man cares about Jarvis's feelings? I don't. But, so like with, with but player like he's a human. He should have feelings, and he does not have any feelings or emotions. In I, this I think their, I think their friendship is actually very believable because they met because he when he hacked in and like. She was Carmen's only friend outside of Vile, and they would be. And she had her phone, and she was the only one. He was the only one she would be talking to. Well, for, I want for, more well, of did, that. What did they then? talk get, about? Get, like, they, <laughs> at this point, like we only—that's all we know. But we don't see it. They just—they just tell us like, oh, this is. They tell us how they meet, but they don't actually tell us like, oh, like, and when she's like really annoyed or really stressed, that's who she talks to. Like I, we don't really see that. I, we're just like really. In, it's like in the last Airbender, assume... where like Sokka meets UA. It's like, and they really hit it off, and then we just skip yeah. to like two weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah. Then again, like but then again, that... Sokka and UA. That's over a space of like a day. Like it's implied that they've been talking what? to each other for years. Yeah, like, but the thing is, they that must they matter. must have had some meaningful conversation between what them. What I mean but the implication is, we need is to not see strong that. Enough. It's not strong. And again, especially with a show where time is kind of questionable because we don't really know how old anyone is. Like we need, and again, Carmen's the only one who ages. We need something to 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 ground us with their relationship and how much they care about each other and we don't really get that all we get from them is this is the plan and some like jokes about geography this is why i feel like if they both kind of have like a trivia night or something for geography maybe like have some for, sort of rapport there where they're just very like whatever we can kind of get some more rapport in that front of just how they are just you know just kids like you know, playing or whatever. Because again, I also don't know how old this kid is. Like, how old is like? Like, was he like what? Was he like ten when he met her, and now he's like fifteen? Like, what's going on? I don't know. We need to. We need something. I need something a little bit more there. And I do think he is. Not, if there was someone to get the second, like title, like uh, like in terms of like cast credit, he is not the one that needed it. Like he, like he only got it because it's the guy from Stranger Things. That's the only reason. But, so I was just like, he doesn't uh, even do anything interesting with the role. <laughs> exactly. Like he's literally just there for like namesake. And I'm just like, we could have like it could have been anyone else. So I'm just personally, I'm like, if you're gonna have him be like the second like name on your list of ca- of the cast, then you need to you need to give us something else. You need to make him a little bit more interesting. Um. But yeah, um, let's move on to the final point. Um, we're kind of going a little long. Uh, what do you guys hope to see in the next season? Like, what is your, if you can hypothesize, give me your best fanfic. What do you hope to see <sighs> mm. in season two? Alex, you sighed. Yeah, because like talking through this, like I don't, 
I feel like the things we're suggesting are things that are like at this point a like you would need to change the fabric of the show. <laughs> like I, yeah. I'm kind of worried that this is kind of the best the show is going to be. Like it's Ka- Karma doing cool things, uh, having fun fights, but against characters that have wa- one major trait and they uh, are show up in one episode and then don't appear until like seven episodes later. And that'll just be the stretcher. And uh, Ma- Ju- Julia getting more screen time will help. Like, I, I think that it's it, possible. It, it, I think yeah, that's a possible, that, that, like, that, That's fix. definitely something that's doable. And I think that that would definitely help let more Julia, less Chase. Um, but, yeah, uh, another thing we haven't talked about, uh, we haven't really talked about enough, the puns. My God, the puns. They're, they're so, like, every opportunity that they have for a pun, they take it. The ca- the, the episode with Tigers, like, there's so many cat jokes. In the middle of the fight, <laughs> she says, I always pegged you as a crazy cat lady. Like, come on, can we get a little more creative? <laughs> so it, it's, it, it's so, so I, I wish they would do less of that, but I I get the feeling that's just the quote campiness of the show and it doesn't work for me but it probably works for some other people just going for the most obvious jokes possible uh, and uh yeah so i, I get uh, also uh, well uh, just while i'm getting getting all my grievances out also in that episode there's a car chase there's a terrible song that's just like get your hands up get your hands up <laughs> it's like so it, it went on for like four, it felt like five minutes it was that awful uh, musical selection so just uh, it's a lot of things that i have issues with i i think that if we somehow get to a place where it, it, I think I'm with you Beatrice at this point that if it was just like a Carmen Julia show I'd be a lot more <laughs> interested but uh, I just want less uh, I think that they're going for half silliness half seriousness and I think I've seen their silliness not really work so if the show tried to go more serious I think that I'd be a little more down for a season two so that that I think in the end is my hope that <laughs> We continue on the. Uh, we continue more on the serious side of like going into Carmen's like how like who are my parents I guess or like why why did I uh, what other traumatizing events did I have at Vile Academy We can go to Shadow Song like what are my internal struggles Julia uh, struggling with like hey my hero Carmen San Diego might be evil What do I do now Like th- those kind of things are interesting and should be given more focus than all the dumb jokes um gotcha yeah uh, uh, same thing uh season one i think was a good a good season one uh, to me felt like the the fan service season like just get it all out there you know give it make it familiar you know do the whole uh you know villain of the week item of the week location of the week thing did that they did it fine um they did that it was fine i am sort of hoping that they they do take a more serious side maybe wean themselves off that sort of uh, storytelling framework and have it be a much more, maybe a more fluid sort, more fluid, uh, dig a little deeper into Carmen, Shadow San, uh, build up the relationship more with like Carmen and player as well as Carmen with Zach and Ivy as well. Um, just have it, have it, have it come out as more of a serial TV show rather than like a uh, little episodic pockmarks here or there. I am, I'd like, I'd like them to, I think eventually figure out what they're, what they're going to do with both vile and Acme. We talked about it earlier about how, and this ties back into the whole decision of making Carmen good in the original series. And again, I should mention Alex mentioned how much he disliked the puns and uh, the puns are definitely annoying, but the, all the original villains in in the original franchise, they were all puns. There were names like servile. I remember it's the, it's the 2010s. We're not in the 1980s anymore. (laughs) I know it was the nineties. I'm not that old. Um, but it's, uh, I know, but here's the thing. In the original show, I think one of the things they stole was the the Panama Canal, and they stuck it in Portland, Maine. So on that on that alone, they're definitely playing more serious, even though it's still ridiculously campy. Yeah, they they stuck a whole canal in the middle of Portland, Maine. And that was one of the plots. Don't ask. Uh, the um, the one thing I am, but getting back to what I was saying about whole Acme and uh, Vile, it's like if Carmen is good, the whole premise of of the original franchise is that Acme was chasing Carmen. But how does that work when we know she's good? She's chasing Vile. Acme's chasing her. I feel like it's going to be like this weird sort of dog chases cat chases mouse thing that is going to lead to like you know it starts. We've already started the whole. 
Yeah, I'll just say in the show they do explain that the reason Acme is chasing Carmen is because they know that Carmen knows about Vile, so they're chasing her to get information that will lead them to Vile. But of course, this ending's twist it seems to point to Acme now thinking that Carmen is evil. But in the first season, I think it made sense that they're going after Carmen more because they think that she's an important step to getting to Vile. Yeah, yeah, I it mean- is that, but also it's not. Acme chasing Carmen and Carmen chasing Vile. It's Acme chasing Carmen, Vile chasing Carmen, and Carmen just wanting to be a thorn in Vile's side. Mm. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, but it, yeah, it's like, but it's also at the same time, it's like it's still. I feel like they still need to sort of clear, sort of clear up and sort of make it a little bit more streamlined. That if Carmen is good, then if Carmen is going to be this good person, Acme is chasing her big now because they think she's a villain or that because they think she knows about Vile. Um, I'd like to see that. Maybe see that just a l- written a little bit more consistently, a little have it mesh a little bit more. But that could be said about everything else, though. Like, I guess for me, it boils down to uh, make it a slightly more serious plot that is more make it more series focused and you know tone down. Like, I know I get the fan service part, but tone it down and try to make it it's an original idea and have it flow more as a show rather than as a TV adaptation of a game. Right, right. Uh, uh, other other fan series things. I'll try to be quick. Uh, first of all, Rita Moreno is the original voice of Carmen San Diego. Her interaction as Cookie Booker with Carmen in the first episode is uh, great. Yeah. I I wish she was in more episodes because she's actually a kind of cool character. She's like white collar crime is where the real money is, and like that's a good line. So I wish that there was more of her, but there's not. And we we might get more more of her in other seasons. So I hope for that. Also, there are so many. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Who in the world is this why in the world is this happening there's so many in the world jokes that are, what in the world like is so, happening yeah they're so goofy and finally there's an ecuador episode or they call it the eight escudos why not just call it the ocho escudos like just go all out with your spanish references please that got very annoying them saying that over and over again uh i think i've covered my full list of grievances now but yes more rita moreno that's the, the key to making this this show great yeah i mean i feel like more rita Putting Rita Moreno in anything is like the solution to everything. The fact yes. that she's in like in West Side Story, the reboot, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Anyway. And her and um, her and her and Gina have worked together on a couple other projects, right? Uh, I, th- I thought they I were don't like think an, so. Wasn't she in an episode of Jane the Virgin, maybe or maybe oh no, I yes, you're right. She plays her father's mother. So you're oh, right. Okay. Now, now, will Rita Moreno be in the live action Carmen San Diego? That's the question. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's happening. There's a, there's a what? No. G- Gina Rodriguez is doing a live action Carmen San Diego next year. You oh, didn't know she that. Is we're doing live action remakes before the shows are even made. Bingo! Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't know that she was doing. Okay, that explains a lot because everyone was saying how like she was create, she was like making creating roles for herself, like like she was creating like projects so that more Latinx people, Latinx representation, and all that. And I thought that when they were talking like, yeah, she like basically is doing the Carmen San Diego thing. I thought she was talking about the animated series, but I guess they're referring to the live action, and then she gets to voice her in the animated series too. Interesting. Well, I feel like a lot. Okay, well, if they get Julia in the live action one, then I am happy. <laughs> fan casting. <laughs> oh my Julia. god, fan casting for Julia! I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, can it be Gemma Chan from from a, um, Crazy Rich Asians? <laughs> that, that sounds good. Let, let's do it. Oh my god, like that. Seeing them together and having that rapport, I would I would lose my mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's 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 as far as I'll go. Um, yeah, I'm just give me more Julia next season, and I'm happy. Um, that's it. And yeah, anyway, uh, that does it for us. I hope. Yes, we're good. Um, any, yes, that does it for us. Um, you can find out all the info on this podcast at overlyanimated.com. You can join us on Discord to text chat about animation at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. You can support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thanks to all our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Jamie, aka Mailman, and thanks as always to our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Hugh. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Take care. Take care, everybody.